Hey guys, Billy Davidson here with Davidson Pressure Washing. In this video, we're gonna talk about pressure washing and soft washing storage units. All right guys, again, we're gonna be talking about soft washing and pressure washing storage units. These are popping up everywhere in the United States, whether you're then down here in the south, southern part of the United States, Florida, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, out west of the United States, these storage units are everywhere. And this could be a really good way that you can add some extra income to your pressure washing business. Now in this video, we're gonna go over a few things that you need to remember when pressure washing storage unit. So the first thing we wanna look at whenever we're gonna pressure wash a storage unit, what they're looking to have done, whether we're doing the buildings and the concrete, such we as looking at in this particular project, or it could be just the buildings. Number one thing that you wanna look at as soon as you step out here on their facility is the feasibility of getting the job done. There comes a big problem with doing storage units. In most situations, storage units have very limited amount of water faucets on site. This storage unit only has two water faucets on a complete site. Now those two water faucets are kind of spread out far apart. So what we're gonna be having to do is either run a lot of hoses to our pressure washer and our buffer tank. The second option we have is to have a water truck to bring us water to our buffer tank. That truck would have to be doing this multiple times each hour to keep our tanks filled. If you're running a pressure washer that doesn't require a buffer tank, you may have to run a very long length piece of hose and then put a boost pump somewhere in that line to boost the pressure to your pressure washer. All of this does add a little bit of headache to doing the job and you must charge for this extra time. Another option is to tap into a fire hydrant if available in your area. And of course, we'll be making more videos on fire hydrants in the future. So make sure you hit that like button. Also guys, we just recorded a whole section of how to price these storage units out. That is gonna be on BillyDavidsonVIP.com. There'll be a link in the description. We've added that training course to the estimating commercial pressure washing jobs. So go check that out if you wanna find out exactly how to price this. But in this video, we're gonna talk about how to do it. All right guys, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna walk around, we're gonna talk about how to do this type of job, what you need to do to make it a lot easier on you. I've washed dozens and dozens of these storage units just like this over the last two and a half decades. So y'all take a walk with us. We're gonna go over several things that make this job a lot easier for you to do and could probably save you a ton of money in the end. All right, first thing you wanna look at whenever you wanna clean these buildings, this is gonna have to be a soft wash only. Just because, come take a look at this. It's full of oxidation, guys. If we put a pressure tip on this and start washing this, this is gonna leave it all scribbled up. And when it dries, it's gonna look horrible and they probably not gonna pay you. So what we need to do is soft wash this metal siding and these doors as well. But keeping in mind, we cannot wet the contents inside these storage units. These storage units are under lease. They could have boxes of clothes in there. It could have valuables in there. We don't wanna push water in there. And we're gonna talk about how to prevent that as well whenever you're doing the concrete. On the building, it is a little bit more easier because we're not going to pressure wash this type of siding. You also want to put that in your estimate. And if you put that in your estimate that you're not gonna pressure wash this building because it could definitely wet the contents of the storage unit, that is gonna set you apart from your competitors. Also, we want to put a tagline in there that we're gonna make every effort not to have seepage inside of the storage unit, but we can't guarantee that no water will enter the storage unit. So what I would really like to do is come in here and since this building is not horribly manifested with growth and mildew and all of this other nasty stuff, I think just downstreaming this building with a mild mix around a 1% is gonna be sufficient enough to clean it. Now you will have to add a surfactant to your downstreaming. If you're gonna downstream this, you would basically mix 12.5% sodium hypochlorite in a bucket with about three to four ounces of a compatible surfactant and draw that out of that bucket through the downstream injector and you're using your black tip or J-Rod and spray these buildings in small sections. 
and this should clear up the mold and mildew. And then after it's done working, we wanna take and rinse this off very gently. Remember, whenever washing these type of buildings, if that pressure spray would hurt your face, it will hurt the building. So we wanna use a minimum amount of pressure, no more than about 60 to 70 PSI to clean this stuff up. If you use any more pressure or if you get too close again, like I was showing you that oxidation on this building is going to bleed off. The water is going to change colors as it runs off onto the ground and it is the color of the siding. When it dries, you will see those scribble marks all in that siding, leaving a result that is not satisfactory. So make sure you're doing soft wash only. If your first treatment of sodium hypochlorite does not work, don't be afraid to add a second treatment to it and do this while it's wet. If it's done dry, you've waited too long. Now, once I add my solution to this siding out here, I'm gonna sit here and babysit it. I'm not gonna get sidetracked and walk around and go do something else and let my si let my solution dry on the siding. We wanna keep an eye on it. In this case, I would probably do about 150 feet at a time. That way I'm standing right here by it and keeping an eye on it. And as it starts to dry, if I still see mold and mildew, I can retreat it with my sodium hypochlorite while it's still wet. Again, you don't want it to flash dry on you because that can leave an unsightly residue on the siding. Again, about 150 feet spans at a time. If you have a two man crew working, they may be in a different area and that could be something that you need to definitely talk to them about. So let's walk and go take a look at these roll up doors over here. I gotta show you something really important. So whenever you pressure cleaning or soft washing these doors, you can introduce water inside of the storage unit, wetting the contents. If there's boxes on the floor, if there's electronics, what have you, we have no idea what's in these storage units. So we don't wanna use any pressure, no more than 60 or 70 PSI around these door units. That way, if any water does get in it, it's not gonna spray very, very far and it'll be right there by the door. That's if any gets in at all. Now you may ask, what happens whenever you're doing a concrete? I'm gonna show you that. If you're only washing the buildings, don't attempt to clean this small area of concrete down there. That can definitely introduce water under that door. Usually those doors do have a rubber seal on them, but we don't know the condition of them. They could be broken, they could be missing. We have no idea. They could be something where the door came down and mashed against a rock or a pebble causing a pathway for water to get in there. So we don't want to clean any concrete unless we're tasked to clean it. If you're cleaning the building only, stay away from trying to do that little bit extra work and trimming in that bottom base plate. This is what I'm referring to, this piece of concrete right here. If I'm only cleaning the building, I will not mess with this stuff. This can get you in a lot of trouble. So now we're gonna talk about cleaning the concrete and look at here, guys, there is parking lot striping inside of storage units that you can go do. You can pressure wash these buildings, the concrete, and do the striping. Let's talk about cleaning the concrete. If I were gonna clean the concrete, this is a very special way that you need to clean this concrete to minimize any water intrusion inside of the door bays. And we're gonna talk about that. So as you see here, this concrete is quite moldy and mildew. It's gonna take a lot of water pressure to clean it. In this situation, I would want to pre-treat at least my first two swipes with my surface cleaner. I want to pre-treat that with at least a five or 6% sodium hypochlorite. That's gonna let me run my surface cleaner at a very fast pace by pre-treating along the building, minimizing the water spray into the building. If we didn't, if we didn't pre-treat this concrete, we would have to creep and crawl with our surface cleaner really slow along the building to be able to clean the concrete. And you know, if we do that, we're gonna shove some water inside of these, these storage units. So again, I'd like to pre-treat heavily with a 5% sodium hypochlorite, at least the first one or two passes. That way you can get away from the building and minimize the water that could creep under those doors. Now, again, in our contract, we wanna say that we're not responsible for pushing water or damages in you know if we push water inside the building we're not responsible for damages now legally speaking i don't know if that's going to hold up but at least we want to have that in the contract to kind of help cover us but we want to minimize the time that we spend with a surface cleaner in front of these roll-up doors 
or any other doors on the facility. By minimizing the time, we're reducing the risk of pushing water under the door. And by the way we wanna achieve that is by pre-treating at least the first one or two passes with our service cleaner. That way, when we come around on our third pass, if we have to slow down, we're more than likely not gonna push water that far away. Now, if you want to pre-treat the entire area, you can pre-treat at least the first couple passes with 5 or 6% sodium hypochlorite, and then the remaining of the concrete, maybe dial it down to a 2 or 3%. But guys, again, just be really careful when pressure washing storage units. We often get these storage units to pressure wash by emailing the property manager or either the owner. Usually there's no one here. Usually there's no office. Usually they're gated. So if you pull up to them and the gates don't open for you, there's probably no one on site. And how are you gonna come deliver a personal business card or some print material to them? So we do it through email marketing. If you're looking for some help with email marketing, if you need some help doing it or needed someone to help you with it, get in touch with me personally. Uh, I know someone that might give you a hand with it. Maybe you can hire that person to send out some emails for your particular area. My phone number is on my website, billydavidsonvip.com. And don't forget to go check out our course on estimating commercial pressure washing jobs on billydavidsonvip.com, where you can also find the All Pro Parking Lot Striping course. There'll be a promotion for the All Pro Parking Lot Striping course down in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video.